It's my pleasure to welcome uh, everyone to the Thomas Norton City Pier. We're pleased to, uh, uh, that you joined us for this day for the Redevelopment Authority in the city of Fall River. Uh, I want to recognize uh, the best elected officials in the Commonwealth. Uh, I want to recognize Congressman James McGovern. Thank you. Our uh, Fall River State Delegation, Senator Michael Rodericks. Our representatives, Carol Fiola. Alan Sylvia and Paul Schmidt, who couldn't be with us today, but uh, sends his greetings. Um, Mayor Paul Coogan. And I'd like to recognize uh, two city council uh, members that are with us, Linda Pereira and Andrew Raposo. Uh, I also want to recognize two, and I hate to call them ex-mayors, past mayors, past mayors, uh, Carlton Viveris, and I think I saw Sam Sutter running, uh, running through. Well, he's next. All right. Uh, Sam Sutter and uh, John Mitchell. Thank you. Um, with us today from the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection is Millie Garcia Serrano. <laughs> Millie, thank you. Uh, she's the uh, director of the South Southern uh, Region and also uh, Kate Cavallo, um, who both of them have contributed to the redevelopment of the city pier for many years, many years. <laughs> I can remember talking with uh, John Mitchell back in the day when <laughs> many, many years ago about, about this project, but there were so many things going on in the city of Fall River that uh, this now became a priority, and we appreciate everybody's help and effort in getting this done. Where's uh, Joe? Joe uh, Ferreira, are you here? Oh, you are. Governor's Council, Joe Ferreira. And I apologize if I missed anyone. If I did, please just yell your name out. Um, I also, uh, especially actually, uh, I want to give a shout out to my colleagues on the Redevelopment Authority Board. Uh, John Erickson, our Vice Chair. Joan Medeiros, our Treasurer. And um, Two other members that are not with us uh, today uh, is Louis Gonzalez and uh, Ann Keen. Um, all have given their time and their talents to guide this project along. And sometime when you have an hour, an hour and a half, I'll tell you about it. Um, I also want to recognize our executive director, Sarah Page. Thank you. Yeah, you, you can't believe. That would be 45 minutes of the hour. Um, her, uh, her tenacious energy and sense of responsibility kept this project on track no matter what the hurdle was, and we had a couple. Thank you. The, uh, the city pier has been closed to the public for over 40 years. Over the last 20 years, $15 million has been invested in environmental remediation, reconstruction, uh, the, reconstructing the pier structure, the addition of the bulkhead, and most recently, the completion of the improvements that you see here today. The Redevelopment Authority is pleased to be opening this pier for public enjoyment and adding two-thirds of a mile to the walking path along the Taunton River. We want to uh, thank our legislative delegation uh, from the Commonwealth and for the Commonwealth support over the last several years, providing 1.6 million from, from the Economic Council, 
uh, 600,000 from, uh, from mass development. Most recently, Representative Carol Fiola secured a $150,000 earmark uh, in the state budget toward the installation of pilings along the north side of the pier. Our goal is to add a dock system in the spring to bring more recreational boaters to our restaurants and tourists. Thank you. Uh, now it's, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the mayor of the city of Fall River, who without his support and guidance, this doesn't get done. Mayor Coogan. Okay, so we have a slight change in the program. Um, they asked me to sing the Star Spangled Banner, <laughs> but they knew this place would empty out like a bomb drill. So it's our pleasure to introduce the Corey sisters singing the Star Spangled Banner. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, oh say. Does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er oh, the land of the free and the home of the Okay, how nice was that? Uh, and obviously this is another very special, special day in the city of Fall River, and it's definitely my honor to be here and celebrate with all of you the opening of the Senator Tom Norton City Pier. I, I will go off script for one second. I've known Tom forever. I remember being in his basement talking with him while he was yelling at me about stuff. I remember being in his office on New Boston Road while he was yelling at me about stuff. But I always listened to him because I always knew he knew more than me and I appreciate his friendship through the years. I really appreciate Tom. The, the dedication of this pier represents another tremendous step forward for Fall River and our waterfront. I want to thank the Redevelopment Authority for their vision and hard work which made this city pier a reality going back decades. Since becoming mayor, I have asked many times about the plans and timelines for this piece of land. This area is one of the most popular in Fall River right now. It's used every day by walkers, boaters, commuters. 
it's an honor to provide our residents with another beautiful open space that can be enjoyed for decades to come. The future of this pier is very bright. In my head, I can already picture concerts, food truck nights, workout classes, maybe a beer garden, and the opportunities are endless. And we've seen a new civic app uh, a new appetite for civic events in our city, and today we acknowledge another great, great place to host them. As I said earlier, this is another step forward for our waterfront, and the City Pier is another very exciting piece of this puzzle that's coming together right before our very eyes. This area is so chock full of potential, and this ceremony comes only a few weeks before we celebrate our next step, the groundbreaking for the Route 79 project, which will go on right behind you. This will completely transform our waterfront and bring millions of dollars of new investment to Fall River. Before I thank up, before I thank up, that's good, before I want, <laughs> I don't want to say what I was going to say. You, you would have thought Joe Biden was here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Before I wrap up, I want to thank the many funders and advocates for this project, some of them Joe already mentioned, which made today a true reality. And although neither one of them could join us today, I want to thank the baker Polito administration for their tireless support of Fall River projects like these right here. Those two... <laughs> Those two have stood right by our sides going forward, and I can't thank them enough for all they've done for the city. And of course, I want to acknowledge the Norton family, Patrick, Doris, I've had his sons in school. Owen was a little bit younger, but it's great to see everybody here today. I really, really appreciate everyone coming out. This is going to be a very special place in Fall River, and thanks for all your support, and especially thank you for coming out today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate that. Um, I'd also now I would like to uh, introduce State Representative Carol Fiola of the 6th Bristol District. That includes the City Pier, the Waterfront, and serves as Chairman of the Joint Committee on Tourism, Arts, and Cultural Development. Carol. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. What a great, great morning. Irish eyes are smiling, Tom. You brought beautiful weather. It's such an honor to follow your footsteps as a representative in the same district and around the corner in the same neighborhood. And um, we could be here for hours, as has been told, uh, to tell Tom's stories. And, uh, but I will, I will not do that today, but just congratulate you. Thank you, because of all of the reps, senators, seven mayors, in the course of the 40 years this project has taken to come to its culmination uh, and still is not complete, um, uh, it takes a village. I hate to use that term again and again, but it takes a village. Whether it's the state agencies you know, working with us on environmental issues, uh, getting funding, it's been a monumental proje project. Uh, since 2016, that is when the, the wheels really got moving. Uh, once we uncovered all of the environmental issues and what we could do and couldn't do. Um, so it has been sh nothing short of miraculous since 2016 to, to get this project completed. And um, to that, there are so many people to thank, as I said, the many mayors, uh, my colleagues, as I stand here representing Rep Schmidt and Rep Sylvia. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, and I kind of looked up that, you know, what did that mean? Uh, they call it the eternal city because it's still evolving after thousands of years. Rome wasn't built in a day, and everyone is impatient. We get that. What's happening? Why isn't it happening? When we look back in 30, 40, 50, 60 years when this waterfront is even different than it is today, uh, we'll, we'll get that. Our, our, the people after us will get that. Um, it's always evolving. 
This city has never evolved in my lifetime and probably yours as much as it has right now. And we've got to appreciate that and thank the countless dedicated people who have done this. Um, so I just want to say congratulations to the Redevelopment Authority. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, uh, to Congressman McGovern, to my colleagues, the Senator and the reps. But I want to just, once again, um, the mayor did one, but highlight the Baker Polito administration. The injection of about six, seven million dollars over a period of time by the state, along with the contributions by the Redevelopment Authority, show how important relationships are to getting things done. And I want to commend this group and all of us for working together, because it's the only way we're going to move the city forward, and you can see that. And lastly, I want to comment the Redevelopment Authority. There's two organizations that have been constant in this project for 40 years. Now remember, 40 years ago, there were dump fishing boats were sunk. Jim Carum started the project, to be honest. Bob's here. Thank you, Bob, Jim. And look fast forward 40 years, but two agencies have been involved. The Redevelopment Authority and the Fall River Office of Economic Development, now known as the Bristol County Economic Development Council. And I want to tip my hat to them, to the Baker Polito administration, and to my husband, Ken, who has been a constant, constant, <laughs> constant force. And I believe, and I'm going to say this, and you would think I would say this, he's, he's a major reason why we're here today. So thank you all. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you, Representative. Appreciate those kind words. And I was going to say that about Ken, too, but I won't. Um, at this time, I'd like to call on Senator Michael Rodericks, who is no stranger to us having spent over 25 years uh, serving the people in the South Coast. And he is the current chairman of the House Ways and Means. Senator Rodericks. Thank you, Joe. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is just an amazing day, beautiful weather. Great job, Joe, for arranging that weather, because you might as well take credit for it. And um, uh, I am, uh, my job is to uh, introduce uh, the gentleman who will introduce our special guest today. But before I do that, I just wanted to say a few words about uh, my good friend and mentor, Senator Tom Norton. Um, I could not think of anyone uh, more befitting than to name this city peer over because I remember way back when talking about this project uh, with Senator Norton. And um, when I was first elected um, to the State House as a state representative in 1996, Senator Norton had one of the nicest, biggest offices in the State House. He was Senate Majority Leader. And it was right across the hall from the House chamber. And, you know, this is pre cell phones, pre texting, pre Facebook. In, in pre, all, pre all of that, that when you wanted to talk to someone, you actually went to their office and sat down and talked face to face. And I can't tell you how many conversations I had with Senator Norton and how much I learned just listening to him, trying to understand sometimes, right, the message, <laughs> the message he was, he was trying to, but, and it was always, he always had, the, he has these great cliches. And, and today, 26 years later, when I have one of the nicest, biggest offices in the State House, I think about Senator Norton every day. And I use his cliches all the time. I can remember one time there was a very controversial issue coming up at the State House. And, you know, we, you get maybe one or two of these a session, right? Where, and, and what I mean by controversial is, is where the general public is split 50-50. Half the people are on one side and half the people are on the other side. These, you know, those are the ones that you know, no matter what decision you make, you're going to anger half your constituency. And I was in there lamenting it, and I didn't know. I'm flipping. I'm, right, what do you think? And he goes, Mike, listen, on controversial issues, you can't walk down the middle of the road. You have to pick a lane, otherwise you get hit by traffic going both ways. <laughs> right? 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 I use that all the time. I use that all the time because we see it as young freshman legislators come in and, you know, we have those hot issues and it's like pick a lane, you know, uh, otherwise you're going to get hit by traffic going both ways. And another time, um, and I'm trying to think of the cliches that I can actually repeat in public, 
you know? Yeah, <laughs> right? Um, but another one is um, we, we had just finished doing a budget, and we were very successful, as Senator Norton always was, in securing good money for the district. And, but for some people, it wasn't enough. You know, it's never enough. You know, you got us a million bucks. Why didn't you get us two million bucks? You know, and I said, Senator, what do you do? He goes, Mike, you can never feed a hungry elephant. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Senator Norton. Thank you for your years of service. Thank you for really uh, your friendship, your advice, your mentorship. I really, really appreciate it. I might have been, I was probably a pain in the neck as I came into your office all those times, but I really, really appreciated and valued uh, the opportunity that I have to have those conversations. It's not like that anymore. Today, everything's, you know, texting and tweeting and, this, you know, it's, it's just uh, something missing uh, in society today when you don't have, when you don't sit down across the table and look someone in the eye and have a, have a real conversation. And I, I really appreciated that. Um, so now I get to uh, introduce the man that will formally introduce Senator Norton, a good friend of mine. We were both elected together in 1996, I to uh, the State House uh, and uh, Congressman McGovern to the uh, U.S. House of Representatives. And um, since then, a, a, again, a gentleman whom I've had uh, a great pleasure and opportunity to work with on so many issues um, as he represented uh, Fall River for years uh, in Congress. He is uh, in leadership, congressional leadership uh, today. Um, and, uh, you know, he's chair of the very powerful House Committee on Rules. Um, and he, he's someone who has never forgotten where he came from, has never shied away from his values, um, and is never afraid to fight for those that need someone to fight for them. Uh, my good friend, uh, someone I'm very, very happy uh, to be seen again today, uh, Congressman Jim McGovern. Well, well, first of all, uh, let me let me just say, Fall River looks beautiful, um, and and I am happy to be here with my good friend Mike Rodrigues, who I have great admiration for. Uh, your two incredible state representatives, uh, uh, Representative Fiola, Representative Sylvia, uh, Mayor Coogan, thank you so much for all that you have done for this city. My colleagues in government here, the Norton family, Doris, Owen, Maggie, uh, uh, Patrick, uh, uh, and uh, I, um, you know, th this, this, this is an incredible day. And to be here uh, at this city pier that's going to be named after our good friend Tom Norton is so appropriate because he has always recognized the potential of this city. And this is the potential of this city. This is beautiful. Um, and, uh, I, you know, and people will come here uh, and enjoy themselves. And, uh, it, and while they're here, they may go to a restaurant in Fall River, they may go to shops in Fall River, or they may go to the Narrow Center in Fall River, uh, which is an incredible place. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, some might say uh, that Tom Norton kind of is an old-style politician. Uh, well, if that's the case, uh, I want to see more old-style politicians get elected to office at every level. <laughs> and I say that sincerely because as we gather here today, I mean, uh, we have, uh, you know, given all of the polarization in our politics, all the hostility, even violence in our politics, I would welcome more people like Tom uh, who ran for office uh, not to bash an opponent or another political party, but ran for office to serve the people he cared most about and to deliver for his community. And, um, <clears throat> I mean, and we got people who run for office because they want to get more Twitter followers. Um, you know, or want to be on a cable TV show more often. Uh, but, uh, you know, he ran to deliver uh, for the people of this community. And when you look around Fall River and the South Coast, and I think my colleagues in the state legislature would agree, uh, his fingerprints are all over everything because he delivered the money that really were the seeds that has, have resulted in a lot of the incredible things that we see happen 
in this area. And so I, I think we are all grateful to him for that. But I, some of you know this, and some of you may not know this, but um, I wouldn't be in Congress um, if it weren't for Tom Norton. Uh, the first person to ever endorse me was Tom Norton. Um, when I first ran in 1994, I didn't make it through the primary. I came in second. Um, and then I ran again in 1996, and he endorsed me again, first person. Uh, and um, without that, uh, there's no way I could have convinced people down in this part of the state that I was worth taking a chance on. And, um, you know, and he taught me an awful lot. I, I, uh, he introduced me to uh, the Venus de Milo and his incredible <laughs> holiday parties and Bob St. Amour. He, um, he, uh, he introduced me to Portuguese food. Like, I, I, I still order charisse. I mean, um, although it's not as plentiful in Worcester uh, as it is down here. Um, he introduced me to the liberal club, which I realize is not always so liberal. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and ham and bean suppers. And I remember one time he arranged this ham and bean supper for me at the liberal club with, with senior citizens. And, and I got up and I gave this talk and I, I really thought, like I hit it out of the ballpark. I thought it was really, really good. And when it was all over with, he came up to me. You know, sometimes he speaks right in your face, right? <laughs> He says, hey, look. I says, well, he says, that sounded like a doctoral thesis. Uh, he says, you know, it, next time it's a Coke and a smile. Um, and he says, uh, also, too long. He says, you were the only thing standing in the way of them getting their dinner. So, you know, so he was always there with very, very sage advice. But look, you know, the, the, the Irish poet Yeats once said, count where man's glory most begins and ends and say that my glory was that I had such friends. And I look here, look at all the people here today. Uh, Tom Norton has a lot of friends. Um, he has a lot of friends because he was a great public servant. Um, he has a lot of friends, and I would say this even because more importantly, he is a very, very good man. Um, and And we need good people um, in, in government. We need good people in the business community. We need good people to step up and to care about their communities and one another. And I have learned so much from him, and I think all of my colleagues in government here have learned so much uh, from him. He has a wonderful family uh, that have also done so much for this community. Uh, and so um, I just want to say, and I think I speak for everybody, everybody here, when I say, Tom, I love you a lot. Um, and it is now my honor and privilege to introduce Senator Tom Norton. stop him from running. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it's a good thing this doesn't have a motor. <laughs> I would have ran out of here a while ago. The, uh, the day, this day is such an honor for me. I, uh, uh, the people that talked before me um, were great people. I think if Senator Michael Rodericks, he tells you that you know, he's the most important senator in the, in, next to the Senate president, he's really, I think, the difference between the size of my office and the size of his office, he had a cash register in his office. <laughs> Kenny Fiola was a former employee of mine, and I thank him for all the great work. I haven't had this opportunity to say that to people. But he's done a lot of work on this waterfront and for the city. Not only was he, not only was he a great basketball player, that ended up in BU. He married a beautiful woman. <laughs> Joe Marshall, I'm going to take the opportunity to thank Joe and his staff of people who worked so very, very hard on getting the Vietnam Wall. 
in the country, I don't believe, and I guess that Jim McGovern can correct me, I, can't, I don't know how many Vietnam walls there are besides Washington. And it's, a, it's with a battleship on one end, we got to put something on the other end. Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you, if you want to ask me later, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> Mayor Coogan, too, the young man who worked, actually worked in the State House with his uncle, who was John Long. I don't know if anybody knows that, was a representative. And um, I knew him way back, knew his family uh, for a long time. And, and he also, as you said himself, he had Owen, Patrick's son, in school. I mean, but he's, he's done a good job. He's kept his head to the, to the grind and he kept doing these things that he needs to do, you know. Um, I'd like to thank Sarah Page, the director of the um, Redevelopment Authority for her effort and all that. And uh, Sarah, will you tell your board to thank them very much because I never got a unanimous vote in my life. <laughs> You know, to an old and dear friend, Congressman Jim McGovern, for taking out time from his work in Washington. Thank you very, very much. And congratulations on the very positive position in the Congress of the Rules Committee. Jim, the late friend of both of us, Congressman Joe Moakley, would be very proud of you, and so am I. I love Fall River and all of its people. I was born in Fall River, educated in the Sacred Heart Grammar School, graduated from BMC Tiffey High School. You've got to get a calculator to add this up. <laughs> uh, and graduated from BMC Tiffey High School. In my senior year at Tiffey, I worked in the garment trade, making men's shirts as a pattern maker and a designer. Um, I served in the United States Army, stationed in Germany with the 4th Armored Division for two years. I was married to the late Janice Flanagan and worked for five, five years at the Massachusetts Correctional Institution in Bridgewater. I was then elected as a state representative for the north end of four of the parts of Somerset and all of Westport. The journey begins. I served 12 years in, the Massachusetts, in Massachusetts as a state rep from four of them. While running for straight rep, I was rallying, went to a rally in the north end of Fall River, and there were some parents of special needs children in the group. And they were asking about services for their children. At that time, I was working in a prison. I had started a clothing program where inmates volunteered to work one night making clothing for children in the state funeral school. The cloth and patents were all supplied by Fall River's garment industry. The, uh, the program stopped because we had, from Bradley's, had got patents of teddy bears. And we blew them up to be a big size, life size. And what happened was two inmates tried to escape in the, <laughs> in the, in the, in the panda bear, so that was the end of that program. <laughs> During my t time as a state rep and a state senator, the Tom Norton Open Golf Tournament ran for 25 years at the Four of a Country Club. The players paid to participate, and they were uh, given by people in this audience who got people to play who were pros. The Celtics, the Red Sox, all of them was nice. And all of that, the money that they paid all went to the special children for 25 years in the greater four of them. <laughs> Every Christmas Eve, we ran a Christmas party around my birthday for senior citizens, including the handicapped at White's Family Restaurant. Jim knows he was there, he helped us. A sit-down meal, dance band, door prizes for a crowd of about 1,000 people, and all of that was done free for 25 years. <laughs> when I retired, your congressman at the, continued the Christmas party, Jim McGovern, until, it was, until he was redistricted. The congressman was, of course, our master of ceremonies, and he was a great friend of myself and both of us, of Joe Moakley. While serving my constituents, we created an immigration service in conjunction with the Massachusetts courts for 20-some years. These immigrants that 
pass through that service were helped by my assistant of many years, and she's got to raise her hand, Isabel Lopes. And we, that immigration service worked in conjunction with the, with the immigration service where it took place every year aboard the USS Massachusetts, the Big Mamie. So we did the citizenship in the courts and in the courts, and then we moved to the battleship and did the citizenship on the battleship. But people from all around the world got on that big boat down there and talked about that. And the fact is that they had their citizenship, they became citizens on board that ship. This waterfront is alive with the nice things. The, um, and, and as I always said, it's all about people, all people. I got to introduce my son, Patrick, right? and, uh, and my wife, Doris Anderson. My son, Patrick, and his beautiful wife, Maggie, of Narrows fame. And their two sons, Benjamin and Owen. Raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Don't, have to, don't get up. Don't get up. Just raise your hand. Benjamin, Benjamin graduated from the University of Tampa and works in Tampa Bay in Atlanta, Georgia, with a former professional Hall of Fame football player who played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Warwick Dunn. Remember that name? And Warwick Dunn, and they provide housing for people in need. And the thing about it is, his mother was, I think, a policewoman, wasn't she? She got, she got murdered. She got murdered. His mother got murdered in Georgia. And from that day forward, he dedicated his, all this thing, and uh, Benjamin is with him this time. And we're very proud of you, Benjamin. <laughs> Owen is a graduate of the Naval Academy and has been accepted by the U.S. Marine Corps and is training to become a U.S. Marine fighter pilot. We're certainly, we're certainly happy for you, Owen. Raise your hand. <laughs> also present is my wife, Doris's daughter, Holly. Uh, where is she? Good friend. There she is. All right. And uh, four of Doris's daughter's Robin's children, Hannah, Tucker, Slater, and Sophie. There's no room in the place for you guys. <laughs> so, so, and Sophie Bjornsson. And of course, our adopted daughter, Michelle. People in this audience, whether you held an office or you didn't hold an office, have been goodwill, you've give, spread your goodwill out to a lot of people. And that's what's appreciated about people who are for river rights. And that's what I carried with me every day. It's all about people. I talk, I talk for you. I thank you for yesterday. I thank you for today. And I thank you for tomorrow. God bless you. Let's make water, the waterfront a tourist attraction to beat none. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'd love to have dinner with you. <laughs> Alice, you better get this. Thank you. <laughs> okay, go get it. Okay. Uh, please be seated. We're not done. He's, he's ready to go. Thank you. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not selling tickets. All right. All right.
just give me a, a moment. Thank you. I leave the mic for one minute. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, um, want to express uh, the board's appreciation uh, We had a lot of uh, collaborators and, and partners when we started, when we took, took this, uh, this project on. <laughs> um, I, I personally, and, I, and I'm sure the board would agree with me, uh, we want to thank Ken, Ken uh, what's your name? Fiola. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Ken, <laughs> Ken Fiola, who has shepherded the city's um, Peer and redevelopment for over 20 years and now uh, serves as an invaluable um, consultant to the Redevelopment Authority. One of the best things we ever did. Thank you, Ken. Another uh, essential member of our team is attorney John Coughlin, uh, who guides us most importantly through a lot of this, the things we had to deal with and keeps us out of trouble. Now, now John usually flies under the radar, so I doubt if he's here today, but I did publicly want to thank him for everything he does for the uh, Redevelopment Authority. <laughs> also, the, uh, the, be the beta group is a, um, a key partner uh, who have put all this together uh, Mary Lou Armstrong, I'm, I'm going to name the people that were involved uh, from Beta. Uh, Mary Lou Armstrong, John, uh, uh, Joe McLaughlin, Eric Galley, Andrew Prechette, and Nick Carvello, and Bill McGrath. Uh, I think they're with us today, and we appreciate that. Thank you for all your effort. You have no idea what goes on behind the curtain, especially with uh, director um, uh, Sarah Page working with these people. Thank you again, Sarah. Uh, that group, um, they planned, designed, engineered, and continue to work with us as we bring dockage to the pier next year. We also want to recognize the construction contractor for the project, MAS Building and Bridge. And last but not least, I want to personally thank our, our board member, he doesn't know I'm going to say this, uh, Johnny Erickson, who really truly ma managed the City Pier Project for several months before we had an executive director. I mean, it was like a, uh, it, he did a lot. That's all I want to say. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Um, I want to thank uh, Johnny again and uh, George Mulatos uh, and their respective companies, uh, Sunrise Erectors and Mulatos Ironworks for their generous donation and creation of the sign that you'll see in a moment. Uh, we all have um, stories of, that are connected to Tom and uh, he, the way I've always viewed him is he's an idea guy. I mean, he has an idea how he wants to get somewhere, but he just goes. Uh, but his, his ideas, uh, they're way ahead of what we could even foresee. And we thank you for that, Tom. Thank you. Uh, um, in fact, speaking of the sign, we now invo invite the uh, Norton family and our distinguished dignitaries to head over to the, interest, uh, the entrance of the pier for the signs unveiling. So Patrick and family, if you don't mind, thank you. And after that, we're all dismissed, thank you.